Welcome to today's presentation. I am Professor David Bartlett and I'm going to talk to you about the importance of diagnosing, preventing progression and recording erosive tooth wear in clinical practice. Before we start, I'm going to explain the background to using the BWE as part of every clinical exam. An eminent group representing the Erosive Toothwear Foundation, a charity aiming to improve knowledge and understanding by patients and dental care workers, the Faculty of General Dental Practice, British Society of Dental Hygienists and Therapists, Medico Legal Bodies and Industry met in December 2018 to listen to patient experiences review data and discuss best practice management of a erosive toothwear for the UK. There was agreement that given our modern diets and lifestyles and the fact that patients are retaining their natural teeth for longer, the prevalence of erosive toothwear is likely to increase. Therefore, erosive toothwear needs to be recorded as part of our routine oral assessment to protect both patients and the dental health care provider. Let's start with the learning objectives. Firstly, we'll spend some time looking at the definition of erosive toothwear and the common clinical signs. We will then look at the prevalence and the key risk factors. Spend some time discussing the BWE with a short video demonstration. I'll show you how simple it is to do and it can be easily done at the same time as you perform the BPE. Finally, we will touch on progression of the condition and the importance of prevention. Erosive tooth wear is the third most commonly observed oral condition after caries and periodontal disease. However, it is not a condition that is routinely screened or monitored as part of a standard oral examination within the UK or for that matter globally. It is important that we identify patients at risk of developing erosive tooth wear early before damage occurs to the dentition and like the BPE, the BWE should be part of your routine oral health assessment. Erosive tooth wear is a multifactorial condition resulting in the loss of tooth tissue through erosion with physical wear such as abrasion or attrition. When acids from the diet or intrinsic sources soften the tooth surface, it becomes more susceptible to mechanical wear. I want to emphasize that erosive tooth wear includes abrasion and attrition, both of which can in theory work independently but normally occur with erosion. We use the term erosive tooth wear to capture that erosion can be involved, but not always. It is important to be clear on the differences between erosive tooth wear and carers. Both ultimately impact on dental hard tissues and both involve acids. However, whereas the acids in carers results in the presence of bacteria reacting with sugars, the acids for erosive tooth wear are sourced directly from extrinsic sources, the diet, or intrinsic sources, the stomach contents. For you clinically, it's important to remember that erosive tooth wear typically affects clean, plaque-free teeth and as such may therefore impact different members of your patient population. The key message for your patients is that erosive tooth wear is preventable. We consume acids, but not everyone has tooth wear. And most acid challenges do no harm as the pellicle protects teeth from acids. Frequent dietary acids overwhelms oral protection and once the underpinning crystal structure is worn away, it's gone for good. Our current understanding on progression is that continued and repetitive acid challenges cause enamel surface to soften, releasing calcium and phosphate ions, that is demineralization. This surface is now susceptible to physical wear from attrition or abrasion. If the enamel surface is exposed to fluoride, for example from a toothpaste or mouthwash, they are taken up onto the surface and reharden, 
remineralization, resulting in fluorapatite, which is more resistant to further myelolytic challenges than the original enamel. It is important to remember the multifactorial nature of erosive toothwear, as if the surface softened enamel is not exposed to mechanical forces from abrasion or attrition, it can remain intact. This image summarizes demineralization and remineralization. It is important to remember that after softening, if the underpinning structure is removed, it's gone for good. Saliva and fluoride will neutralize the acidity and slowly reharden the tooth enamel, but the process can be hindered if acid attacks are frequent or followed by an abrasive challenge, such as brushing with an abrasive toothpaste, as the enamel doesn't have time to repair or remineralize itself. Erosive tooth wear can occur on all tooth surfaces. The key teeth are the buccal surfaces of the central incisors and the occlusal surfaces of the mandibular molars. The teeth are clean and plaque free and early signs are difficult to distinguish with unworn teeth. But as the condition progresses, it's easier to diagnose. The earlier you can diagnose a condition and start prevention, the better. So recording erosive tooth wear in every patient helps to stop severe levels of wear developing. Early signs of erosive tooth wear for anterior teeth may include loss of enamel surface anatomy, producing rounding of the mesial and distal edges and along the incisal edge. Loss of enamel features such as mammalons and a glassy smooth appearance on the facial buccal surface. As enamel destruction becomes more pronounced, there is more hard tissue destruction and it becomes easier for us to identify clinically. Typical signs of an anterior teeth are loss of palatal structure, can reduce the support along the incisal edge, distinct buccal lesions can also occur and grow in size, and as the condition progresses, the lack of support leads to fracture of the enamel and the teeth become shorter. As erosive tooth wear progresses, anterior teeth may show signs of darkening from the underlying dentine, a grooving or wear along the incisal edge, shortening of the clinical crowns. The teeth can become shorter, which makes it difficult to restore. For some patients, the pattern is asymmetrical and often is difficult to be precise about the cause. Once it gets to this stage, then treatment becomes increasingly complex with a higher level of maintenance necessary for the patient. Signs of erosive tooth wear on posterior teeth or rounding of the cusp tips, loss of morphology, and the surfaces become shiny and glossy. As the erosive tooth wear progresses on posterior teeth, occlusal cupping and exposure of yellow dentine can happen as well as changes to the shape and height of teeth. As the exposure increases, the wear lesions merge and the dentine becomes exposed and in severe cases, the clinical crown shorten and the reclusal changes. Prevention has a role to play here in slowing progression and again helping to avoid the restorative maintenance cycle. The loss of clinical crown height can result in alveolar compensation. The images here show how the maxillary teeth have seemingly over erupted while the mandibular molars have almost no clinical crown height. With modern lifestyles and an aging population, it is inevitable that erosive tooth wear will feature more in your future patient populations. Tooth wear is increasing in prevalence and signs of the deciduous teeth can indicate tooth wear in adults. In this video, Dr. Sergio O'Toole outlines why she believes that as dental professionals, we all have a duty of care to discuss erosive tooth wear with our patients. I think we have a duty of care to record erosive tooth wear in general practice, particularly as patients are gaining awareness of it. Also, 30% of the population have this condition but aren't aware 
uh, of this condition. We don't talk about it enough in examinations and we don't um, talk about preventive measures enough. So I think there is a duty of care to first of all record it, second of all inform the patient and thirdly address any preventive issues that we can address. Looking at epidemiological studies, as many as one in three young adults in Europe suffer from erosive tooth wear and the UK cohort showed the highest levels. This is now being confirmed in numerous published studies. Our modern lifestyle plays a huge part in the prevalence of erosive tooth wear. Snacking is on the rise and forms a significant proportion of consumption occasions throughout the day. Fresh fruit can be a leading snack. It's important that we reinforce to patients to maintain fruit as part of our healthy diet and that we should aim to reach five a day but restrict fruit and acidic snacks to meal times. This is not so much what you eat but how you eat and drink that affects your erosive tooth risk. The BWE was designed for clinicians working within general practice as a quick and efficient means to record the erosive tooth wear severity in the clinical notes. It was designed to mirror the BPE so that both indices can be used at the same time. They are both conducted in a similar way with both recording the most severe surface or site in each sextant. There was consensus among the working group that the BWE should be used routinely at each oral health assessment and conducted at the same time as the BPE. In this video, you will see me and Dr. Sershiro Tool introduce you to the BWE and demonstrate the process involved in the examination. The Basic Erosive Wear Examination, or BWE, is a simple tool to be used by healthcare professionals to record and screen for erosive tooth wear in practice. It was originally developed in 2008 by researchers, clinicians and academics to help record tooth wear. And since then it has been widely adopted as the tool to record erosive tooth wear in general practice. To measure the BWE, go through each sextant, measuring the surface with the greatest amount of wear, you then come to a cumulative score, giving you an indication of how much erosive tooth wear is present. Naught is nowhere. One is early damage to the teeth. Two is less than 50%. Three is greater than 50%. So we're going to do a BWE score in the lower jaw, the lower right sextant the anterior teeth and the lower left sextant, look at each tooth, and the tooth with the greatest amount of wear is in that sextant is given the BWE score. So in this case, there's a filling on that tooth, the premolars are unworn, probably a grade one. The lower anterior teeth, very little wear at all, grade one, and the lower left on the occlusal surface, all there's dentine exposed over the whole surface. The wear is greater than 50%, it's grade three. In the upper jaw, there's a fair amount of occlusal wear on all of these teeth. Upper left sextant, probably a grade three. The premolars. The anterior teeth are restored, not much wear, probably a grade one. On the upper right side, little evidence, and the BWE, quite a lot of occlusal wear, but no dentine exposed, grade two. The BWE divides the patient's dentition into sextants and you score the most severely affected tooth surface within that sextant. The most severely worn tooth surface in each sextant is given a score from 0 to 3, 0 being nowhere, 1 early wear often with minimal surface effects, 2 is the loss of tissue affecting less than 50% of the surface, 
and 3 greater than 50%. For both grades 2 and 3, dentine is commonly exposed. All wear is scored regardless of the underlying etiological agent. It's easier to record more severe wear, grade 3, and grade 2 is easier to recognize the naught or 1. A good tip is that grade naught would normally be expected to be seen in newly erupted teeth found in adolescents, but is unlikely in adults, particularly over the age of 25. I'm now going to guide you how to use the BWI. Score 0 is used for nowhere. Score 1. Here you can see early changes to the enamel surface with loss of mammalons and flattening of the enamel as you can see on these central incisors. Score 2. As you can see on the upper left central incisor there is erosive tooth wear near to the cervical margin but it is less than 50% of the surface. This image shows the erosive tooth wear has progressed to involve more than 50% and dentine is showing with loss of clinical crown height. There is a logical process flow. Firstly, start off by considering if there are any signs of wear. If the answer is no, the score is zero. If not, continue. If there are signs of wear in the sextant, choose the tooth with the most wear and evaluate the extent of the defect. If it is minimal and the change is subtle, the score is 1. For surfaces with more extensive defects, then consider if it is less or more than 50% of the tooth surface. If it is less, the lesion is scored 2, and more than it is scored 3. Once you have assigned a score to each of the sections, this is totaled up and can guide the management. Most importantly, you need to remember that if a patient scores 3 in any sextant, then they should be considered high risk. Note, it is at this point that restorative intervention may be indicated. For all other scores, prevention is the primary focus. I am frequently asked if the BWE is suitable for use in children. Whilst it is not optimally designed for children, it can be used as a simple tool for recording presence of wear. The key thing is to document and inform the patient or their carer. Remember, primary dentition wears at a faster rate than the permanent dentition, and published data confirms that erosive tooth wear in the primary dentition is a risk factor for the permanent dentition. Risk factors for erosive teeth wear are largely based on diet and behavioural factors. But please remember, it is not what you eat, but how your patients eat or drink that really affects the erosive tooth wear at risk. Things you must consider include the frequency of consumption, in particular outside of mealtimes, the way that food or drink is consumed, for example swilling or swishing drinks, or sucking on fruit, prolonged eating or drinking habits, for example, grazing during the day, sipping on drinks. The erosive potential of foods and drinks is related to the strength of acid, partly based on pH, but also the strength of acid. Titratable acidity is a measure of the strength of the acid. Here, we see that drinks such as apple, or grapefruit juice have high erosive potential, whereas a cola drink has a medium potential. You can eat as much fruit as you like, but limit this to mealtimes. Follow a healthy diet, but avoid sipping, swilling, or holding drinks in your mouth. In this video, Dr. Saoirse Atul shares some of the key risk factors for erosive tooth wear. We know that acid or an acidic component underlies all types of severe erosive tooth wear. So the things that uh, we are looking out for are first of all the diet and second of all any type of reflux activity. Um, the diet is something that we can prevent and control for and I think it's important to address that. So what we're looking for are what the patient is drinking throughout the day, what are they sipping on, um, 
We try to always advocate for just water, particularly between meals. The other thing to watch out for is snacking habits. If they are snacking on acidic fruits and uh, acidic drinks throughout the day, that's going to dramatically increase their risk of developing erosive tooth wear. Your key risk factors for erosive tooth wear are diet and reflux. If we look at diet, which is simpler, try and avoid eating fruit or acidic drinks between meals. It's the same story as caries. If you reduce that frequency, then you follow a normal pattern and the risk of developing erosive tooth wear is less. Three useful facts that I've found patients are often confused by and should be aware of. Firstly, water, sparkling water, milk and tea, coffee without sugar or fruit flavorings are safe. Be aware that sugar free does not mean they are less erosive. Thirdly, watch out for hidden dietary acids such as fruit teas or fruit water. Dr. Saoirse O'Toole shares her key tips for prevention. The first thing I would say is to look at what you're drinking throughout the day. Um, if you're sipping on things like fruit teas, um, lemon in water, fruit in water, or any carbonated drinks or any juices, this is something that if you can switch to having those only with meals and having water or milk in between meals, exactly, exactly the same as Kerry's, this is probably going to make the biggest difference. To help you, we recommend that you ask these questions to patients when you suspect or diagnose dietary erosive tooth wear. In addition to acidic food and drink, intrinsic acids also play a role. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is common, particularly in middle age. In addition, young patients may suffer from eating disorders which can impact on their dentition. Gastric causes of tooth wear are less common, but gastric acids are very strong, so will cause extensive wear if vomiting or reflux is frequent. NICE have developed guidance on eating disorders which refers to oral health recommendations. These include the advice to avoid brushing immediately after vomiting and the use of a non-acid fluoride mouthwash. These also reinforce the need for regular dental reviews. Preventive advice for patients at risk of erosive tooth wear is also included as part of the Delivering Better Oral Health Evidence-Based Toolkit. Here, advice includes being aware of the frequency intake, the need to avoid brushing after vomiting, and being aware of regular medications which may be acidic. The oral hygiene advice in the toolkit includes the use of fluoride toothpaste to protect enamel which is low abrasive in nature. Ideally, you should not brush immediately after eating or drinking acidic food or drinks, but this may be counterbalanced against other oral diseases. If this is the only time you can brush your teeth, then brush your teeth. Preventive advice should be then targeted at reducing the frequency of dietary acid intake. The key thing to remember is that the restoration of tooth wear should be a patient-driven process, not dentist-driven. One of the key reasons patients may seek restoration is for their appearance. However, restoration is neither timely or cheap and requires considerable investment by the patient in terms of cost, time and maintenance. This chart shows examples that can help identify a key factor in management of patients with erosive tooth wear. It is not based on science, but clinical experience. On the left, we see active erosive tooth wear. 
the teeth are unstained as they have insufficient time to take up dietary stains. The combination of acid and physical wear from brushing are removing the stain. Here, preventive advice is needed. On the right, we see stained teeth, so inactive, erosive toothwear. Full mouth rehabilitation of erosive toothwear is expensive and time consuming. According to a study by O'Toole et al, costs could be up to 30,000 for private treatment on average, and treatment could take up to 24 months. It is important that patients are made aware of the condition at the earliest stage, ideally before it reaches the need for restorative intervention. In an increasing litigious society, it is important that patient realises that progression of the condition is dependent on their behaviour and not an oversight of the health care provider. Increasing expectations of the patients and the public mean there is an increased risk of dissatisfaction and litigation. There is still so much that is unknown about erosive toothwear and whilst the condition tends to have a slow rate of progression, the potential impacts are far-reaching. Added to which, it is a condition that often affects the committed patient, as it is not triggered by a lack of oral hygiene or high levels of plaque. Our recommendation is that erosive toothwear should form part of your routine oral health assessment to avoid a misdiagnosis. It is important to document any signs and make a note of advice given. It is important to reinforce to patients that they play a role in protecting their own oral health and managing their risk factors. Patient has given you a good insight into erosive toothwear and monitoring and management. As a condition, it is the third most commonly observed and progression will have significant impacts. Changes in lifestyle and health trends are impacting patients with increase in healthy snacking. As dental professionals, we have a duty of care to identify the condition and raise awareness with patients. The Faculty of General Dental Practice Dental Protection, the British Society of Dental Hygienists and Therapists, KCL and GSK recommend, firstly, use the BWE at every clinical examination. Make it part of your routine like the BPE. Secondly, give preventive advice and write it down. Thirdly, intervene with restorative treatments only when necessary. You can find more about Rosif Toothwear via Erosive Toothwear Foundation website www.erosifetoothwear.com